Welcome into the video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne, and today I wanna to walk you through how to use the Google Pixel 8a for beginners. This will be a full beginner's walkthrough. We're gonna go over everything from how to navigate the phone, how to download apps, how to set up your email, how to secure the phone with a password, how to make calls, how to send text messages, how to take pictures, and we'll go over how to set up the fingerprint sensor as well. So make sure you watch the video all the way to the end so you don't miss any important information. Let's start with a tour of the phone. I just wanna walk you through all the buttons where everything is. So let's turn off the screen here. Now on the left side of the phone, there are no buttons. And on the right side of the phone, you'll find the uh, power slash standby button. And the way this works is simply tapping the button will wake up the phone. Pressing it again will put the phone to sleep. Now keep in mind when the screen is off, it doesn't necessarily mean that the phone is off. Um, the phone just could be asleep. Okay, next we have the volume up and volume down buttons. And these are how you control the volume on the phone. And I'll go over later how to use these buttons to put your phone on vibrate, silent, or uh, sound on as well, okay? Now at the top of the phone, there is nothing, nothing up here. Okay, so this is the bottom of the phone. You'll have two speakers right here, and you'll also have your charging port. Now this charging port is called a type C charging type. If you ever need to buy a new charger, you'll need to look for a type C charging type. Now in the box, you will get a type C charging cable that you can plug right into here. Now, some of you might be asking, well, how do I plug in headphones? I don't see a headphone jack. So this phone doesn't have an, a headphone jack, but you can get an adapter that looks like this. And essentially that adapter will plug into this port. And on the other end, it will have an auxiliary port that will let you plug in your headphones. Now, you can also purchase a pair of Type-C headphones. I'll make sure to link some below in the description so you have some options to take a look at. But um, you charge here, and this is also where you would connect your headphones. Okay, so this is the lock screen. And to get into the phone, you simply need to take your finger, put it on the screen, and just drag your finger up the screen like this. Now, the screen went off while I was doing it, so let's try again. Take your finger, put it on the screen, and simply drag up the screen. And that's how you unlock the phone. Let me show you one more time. Take your finger, put it on the screen, and just drag up the screen. Now that's how you get into the phone. Now later on in the video, I will go over how to set a passcode. So when you do drag on the screen, when you're on that lock screen, it'll ask you to put in a passcode first. And I definitely recommend that everyone set up a passcode because you don't want anyone to just have access to your personal information. You want them to have the code first to be able to get in and obviously you control the code. Okay, so we're on the home screen. This is the home screen of the phone. And the phone comes initially in what is called gesture mode. So that means to use the phone, you have to, um, you swipe up and there's different gestures you use to control the phone. It's not the most intuitive thing for a new user. So I wanna show you how to change that so it'll be easier for you to navigate the phone. Now, if you swipe down from the top of the screen and you swipe down again, you'll find a settings wheel. You wanna tap on this settings wheel. This will take us to the settings. You're gonna swipe up, go to system, and then navigation mode. And we're gonna switch it from gesture navigation to three button navigation. This will give you three buttons at the bottom of your screen that will make it a lot easier for you to use the phone, okay? Now, the first button here is called the home button. And when you press this button, it takes you back to the home screen. Let me demonstrate. So we were just in the settings. I pressed the home button and guess what? Now we're back on the home screen. So no matter where you are on the phone, whether you're in the web browser, right? Maybe you're on the internet doing a web search. If you wanna go back to the home screen, you tap the home button. Pretty simple there. Now to the left, you have what's called the back button. This always takes you back one step. So if I'm in the settings, and right now I'm in the settings and we're on this navigation mode page, and guess what? I wanna stay in the settings, but I wanna get out of this page. I'm gonna hit my back button. 
and it will take me back one step. And that's basically what it does. Now, maybe I switch and now I go to the software update section and it says, I don't have any updates. Great, I'm gonna hit the back button. So all that button does is just take you back one step. Now, if you're on the main page of an app and you hit the back button, it's gonna take you out of the app. Oh, we were on the last page, I thought we were. Okay, so we went back one page. If I press it again, if there's nowhere else to go back to, it's just gonna take you back to the home screen. So that's what the back button does. Next, let's go over what is called your recent apps button. Now all this does is it allows you to see all of the recent apps that you had open. Now really quickly, I'm gonna be using the word apps pretty frequently in the video and I wanna just explain what that is. Now, on a computer, computers have programs, phones have applications or apps for short. These little guys are all apps. So whenever you hear me reference apps, I'm referring to these little applications or programs. So that's what that means. Now, when we go to, when we hit the recent apps button, this allows us to see all of the applications that I recently have had open. And so as you scroll through, you might see, oh right, we went to the settings earlier and so that is still open. When you hit the home button and you go to the main page, that application is still running in the background of the phone. And when you press this button, it shows you everything that is currently running in the background of your phone. So what you wanna do once you finish using an application, you wanna come here and you can swipe up to basically close that out so it's no longer running. Okay, now another thing is, uh, here's a web page I was on a few minutes before I started the video. Let's say I wanna go back to this page because I wanna look at it again. Well, I can use this recent apps button to simply get back to something I was looking at earlier. And that's also where this comes in handy because it allows you to, to toggle through anything you were doing previously and you can continue to um, work on that. It could be, hey, let me jump to my Facebook and check this. Oh, someone sent me a text, I'm gonna jump to that. So this shows you what's running and allows you to go back to that later if you need it. I also wanna point out, you have a screenshot button right here. And so if you're ever wanting to take a screenshot of a web page, you can press this button and it'll take a screenshot for you. Now watch this. I'm on this website and let's say I scroll through and I really want to take a picture of this screen right here. I'm going to hit the recent apps button and tap screenshot and that's going to save to my Google Photos. So just a cool little fact. All right, so that's what these three buttons do. Home button, back button, recent apps. Those are the three primary buttons you'll be using to navigate your phone. Now there's two other things that I wanna show you that are also important in regards to navigating where everything is on your phone. So one, we're on the home screen and um, you can swipe left and swipe right and you'll have pages that'll have other apps on them. So you have some apps here, some apps there, but all your apps are found in what is called the app drawer. When you swipe up, so we're on the home screen, I swipe up, it's gonna take me to what is called the app drawer, and this is where you'll find all of the apps that live on the phone. If you ever download a new app, you're always gonna find it in this section, okay? So rest assured, download something new, check here, it'll be here. Now, you also have what is called the notification panel, which I briefly showed you earlier. When we take our finger at the top of the screen and we drag down, this brings us to what is called our notification panel. And in this section, you will find um, two main things. You'll find shortcuts to the most frequently used uh, settings, and you'll find notifications from the apps that are downloaded on the phone. So for example, I have the Amazon app on my phone, and Amazon has sent me multiple notifications about different things happening with my account. You know, uh, one of my one of the things I just ordered was delivered, so that's there. Um, savings for a, a sale, Prime Day. These are all different notifications from Amazon. If I want to look at these specific notifications, there's a little drop down arrow right here, 
that I can press, and then I can look at all these notifications individually. You know, okay, this was delivered. I can swipe right to simply get rid of that. This was delivered, this was delivered, this was delivered, or that was out. And oh, Amazon's having a big sale. Let me tap on that so I can see more about it. So this is gonna show you those different notifications and then allow you to go into the app to get more information. Now, let's go back. Again, we're just swiping down from the top. You can also, you don't necessarily have to swipe from the top of the screen. You can swipe on anywhere on the home screen to bring up that menu. So, you know, it used to be you had to start at the top. Now you can swipe anywhere. So just FYI. Okay. You'll find other information in here. For example, if you're signed into your, your email, which we're going to go over later, if you get a new email, it's going to show up in this menu as well. So this is a, a really easy way to check and see if you have any new emails. That's another thing. If you had a new email, you could tap on the notification and it'll take you right to that email. Also, if you have a missed call, if you have a text message that someone sent you, all that will show up in this menu. So this is a very important part of the phone and you'll want to check this throughout, throughout your day. Now, at the top of the screen here, you have these these switches that are all tied to different functions on the phone, different settings. And two of the most important ones are your Wi-Fi switch and your Bluetooth switch. So let's say you want to connect your phone to your home Wi-Fi. Well, you can go to the settings and go through multiple pages to try to set up your Wi-Fi, or you can just uh, first go here and it'll bring up your menu and it will show you all the Wi-Fi networks that are available. Now, I'm already connected to a network right now, but if I scroll through this list here, or tap on see all, excuse me, it's gonna show me all the available Wi-Fi networks. And basically, when you get home and you're setting up your phone, you'll wanna look for your network. Maybe your network is, is named blessed. You would tap on blessed, and then you would simply type in the password for that network. Keep in mind the password is case sensitive, so make sure if there's a capital, you put a capital. How do I put a capital? Well, you tap on this um, tap on this little up arrow right here, and that will make all the letters capital. So you can tap on a specific letter, and then it'll jump back to lowercase. So you can tap this to get uppercase. Now, if you tap and hold, or excuse me, you tap it twice, now it'll keep all the letters uppercase. So that's just a quick quick note on how to keep, you know, for typing. Okay, so you'll type in that password and then you're connected to that network. Now, let's say you're at Starbucks or Denny's or you're at a restaurant or even someone else's house and you wanna connect to their network, it's the same process. And I wanna take you back just to show you one more time. Okay, so you're gonna tap on internet. Again, this is you going somewhere else and trying to use a different Wi-Fi network. You're gonna tap see all, look at all the available networks. Find the one you're supposed to, you know, that is for that location, put in your password, and you're good to go. So that's one useful function of this notification section. Another thing is Bluetooth. You want to connect to a Bluetooth device, tap on the button, you tap pair new device, and then on your Bluetooth device, you'll probably have to hold down on a, a button or you'll have to put that device in pairing mode so that now that device is sending its Bluetooth signal, it'll show up on the phone, you'll tap on the device and then you'll be paired to it. So that is the process to connect to Bluetooth. Now, you'll find a lot of other cool things in here, your flashlight, it's gonna use your phone flash as a flashlight. And there are, there are even more functions than what you see to access the rest of the switches, you need to swipe down further. And guess what? We have our do not disturb mode, our alarm, airplane mode, and then you can swipe left and you have more different switches. You have your battery saver mode, screen recording, QR code. You have a couple of pages worth of little shortcuts. So uh, when you get time, swipe through here and just touch each button so you can see what they do. You also have your brightness switch as well, and this will let you uh, lower or raise the brightness of the phone. Now out of the box, the phone is set to auto brightness, which means it will adjust the brightness depending on how bright 
or dim the room is that you're in. So um, just keep that in mind, but you can manually control it from here. Lastly, you will find, and I showed you this earlier, but I just want to point out again, your shortcut to get to your settings and your power button. If you want to turn off the phone, you'll tap on this power button. And here you'll have three options, an emergency button, a restart button, or a power off button. So you can simply tap restart to restart the phone, power off to power it off, or this button, which will take you into the emergency mode. And in the emergency mode, you have a quick swipe to get right to calling 911. You can also program some other things in here as well, or you can hit the dial pad to make an emergency call. So that in short is the notification panel. And that kind of wraps up the first section of the video, which is simply how do I navigate the phone? How do I find everything? So make sure you bump that like button. Don't wait till the end of the video. Bump that like button. If you've learned anything new or the video has been helpful so far, um, definitely appreciate you guys doing that. And it helps the video to reach more people. Let's now move into our next section, which is how to download applications or apps for short. Now, pop quiz, where do you find the apps on the phone? You swipe up on the home screen. Swipe up. This takes us to our app drawer. That's right. This is where you'll find all the apps that are currently on the phone. And if we want to get a new app, we're going to go to what is called the Play Store. The Play Store is essentially the it's it's the store. It's where you'll find all of the apps that come installed on the phone. Now, some of you, when you tapped on Play Store, it did not take you to this screen. It took you to a probably a Google screen asking you to sign to your Google account. If you're on that screen, you need to do one of two things. You either need to type in your information for your Gmail account or Google account. If you don't have a Gmail, there should be a button that says create account. You'll tap on the create account. It takes about two minutes to create a new Google account. You have to have a Google account in order to download apps on the phone. So take that two minutes, create a simple Gmail, write down your password, sign in, and then it will take you to this screen. Now, let me give you a brief uh, rundown of navigating the Play Store. So first, let's look at the bottom of the screen and you'll see the different uh, sections. So there's a games section, apps, a general search, there are offers, so sometimes there will be deals on different apps or, or products, and then there is a book section. Now, um, most people only go to this uh, store if they there's something specific they want to download. However, if you're just trying to look for app ideas, I would tell you start here. Go to apps, and there are tabs at the top here. So for you, top charts, uh, kids, categories. So play around with these different tabs here. If you go to categories, find the category you're interested in and then see all the apps that are available in that category. Um, top charts is showing you what are the most popular apps that are being downloaded. And it, it's sorted by free, but you can change that from free to top paid. And then you'll get apps that are paid. Now, one thing I want to point out this app here, or this game, is $4.95. And so this little blue button has a price in it. However, most of the apps are free. So if I were to, let's see, let's go to games. If I go to this solitaire game, notice you don't see a price in that uh, blue bubble. It just says install. So I just wanna make that really clear. If you ever just see install in that box, it means that you're dealing with a free app and simply tap on it and you can just install it just like this. You'll see the little spinning circle and that means that that app is being downloaded to your phone right now. Now, if you have a specific app that you want to download, for example, maybe you want to download the Uber app on the phone. You'll wanna to go to the search section. So, games, apps, search, go to search. And it looks like there's a little shortcut here if you go to search. So let's start start on apps here and just follow me. Go to search, this takes you to the search section. And if you tap search again, 
It'll bring up your keyboard and allow you to begin typing the app that you're searching for. Now, you could type in Uber, U-B-E-R, and hit the magnifying glass to search for that app. Or, this is a really fun shortcut, you can tap on the microphone in the upper right corner, and then you can just say the name of the app and it'll search for you. Let's try it. Uber. Chipotle. Chick-fil-A. Home Depot. So this is a cool shortcut to just search for an app quickly. Just tap the button, say the name, it'll come up. Here's the Home Depot app. I can tap on this install button here to install it now, or I can tap on the Home Depot icon. It'll take me to the app uh, page, and then I can tap on pictures and see exactly what the app looks like. Now for an app like Home Depot, you would just download it, but um, if there was a game you were trying to download, you would want to look at the pictures first. For example, there are multiple Sudoku games that you can download, so you don't necessarily need to download the first one. You can tap on the pictures and you can swipe through and look and see what the app looks like. And you might say, oh, this app looks boring. I want to find a better one. So that's just um, that's how I usually go about downloading an app is I want to see the pictures first and make sure I like the layout of the app. Now, we just downloaded that Solitaire app. Now, how do we find that now that it's downloaded? We're going to hit our home button to go back to the main screen and it will load those apps on your home screen. You can also swipe up and you'll find those in your app drawer. Here's our new app, our Solitaire app, and our new Home Depot app. So that's a quick rundown of how to download apps on the phone. And you know, one of the, the biggest pluses of smartphones is that there are so many apps you can download. So go to the Play Store and look through the different categories and find apps that will resonate with things that you like. There is literally an app for anything and everything you can think of. All right, let's move into how to make calls and how to answer the phone when someone calls you. I'm going to start with um, a call coming in so you can see what it looks like and we can see how to answer the phone. So. I'm going to initiate a call on my end and you'll see it pop up on the screen. So call is coming through. You can either tap on the green button to answer or tap the red button to decline it. I'm going to answer it by tapping the green button. And now my call has started. I can put the call on speakerphone by tapping on this button here. I can mute the call by tapping mute. I can tap more if I would like to add someone to the call. And if it's if the call is done and you wanna uh, end it, simply tap on the red button to end the call. So pretty self-explanatory. Now, one thing I wanna point out is that um, when a call comes through and you're not using the phone, it's gonna look a little different. So I'm gonna turn off the screen and I'm gonna initiate a call, and I want you to see what it looks like this time, because the way we answer it is gonna be different. Okay, so the call is coming through now, and you're gonna take your finger and put it on the phone button. You drag up if you wanna answer, or you drag down if you want to decline the call. Now, it happened quickly, so I'm gonna do it again, so you guys can see what it looks like. So let's initiate that call one more time. Again, you put your finger on the call button, on the phone button. I can drag up to answer or drag down to decline. So that method is a bit trickier, unfortunately, and there's not really a way to get around that. So you just need to think of it like when you're on the main screen, finger on the button, drag up, and that's how you answer the call. So. Just wanted to show you both so you're prepared for that. That dragging gesture is the same as we use on the home screen. So put my finger on the little lock here and just drag up. And you know, so the, the dragging is used in different parts of the phone. So that's how you answer the phone when someone calls you. Now, uh, here's how you initiate an outgoing call. You're gonna tap on the 
uh, phone button in the left corner. And you'll tap on the dialer, which is in the bottom right corner. And then we'll type in the phone number we want to call. So here's our phone number, 323-853-1212. I'm going to, so area code, phone number, and hit the call button right here. You're going to give it a couple of seconds to connect. And there we go. I can hit speaker to do speaker. All the on-screen options are going to be the same. And when you're all done, simply tap on the red button to end the call. So obviously outgoing calls are really easy. The incoming calls can vary depending on if you're using the phone or not. All right. So that is the calling section. Let's now move into how to send and receive text messages. So right next to the phone is your text messaging app, Google Messages. And this app will allow you to send text messages, receive text messages. And so let's start with just simply how to send a message. The bottom right corner, you'll see a button that says start chat. Tap on that button. And I can simply type in a phone number or I can type in a name. If someone is saved in your phone, you can type in their name and their phone number should come up or if you don't have them saved, just simply type in the phone number with the area code first. There we go. And there's our phone number. Now, you, all you really need to do after you type in the number is tap the check box in the bottom right corner or the check circle, and it will set up a brand new text message for you. Now, to bring up your keyboard, you need to tap in the box that says text message. Your keyboard will pop up, and now you can type your message. Hi there. And if you want to add an emoji, which is are those little fun icons, you can tap on the emoji button here, and you can add a little smiley face. You can also add one of these stickers, which are just larger emojis. And then if you're ready to send it, you're going to tap on this little arrow. This is the send button, and it will send off the message. Now, you can do more than just type words and icons. You can send uh, what's called a voice message. So instead of you typing the message, you can hold down on this record button and you can record a voice message like this. Hey, good morning, Jim. Hope you have a great day today. So you hold down the button, you talk, and when you're done, you let go of the button and it will attach a voice recording. You can simply tap and play. Now that I have the volume turned down so you can't hear it, but you can attach just a voice recording and we can hit that same button, the send button to send that message. Now, there's another cool feature, which is voice to text, which is this little microphone. So instead of you having to type out the message, you can simply tap on this microphone and then you can say the message and it will just type out what you say and it's pretty accurate. Let's give it a try right now. First, it will ask you to give permission for that microphone to record uh, when you use this function. We'll tap while using the app. Let's go back to text messages. So it's already started trying to do it. So let's just start over. We're going to tap that microphone again and start our message. Good morning, Jim. I hope you have a great day today. Now, when you're done, you need to tap the microphone again so it'll stop um, um, the function of the voice to text. So it just plugged in everything we said into a message. This is super convenient. This is really great when you're trying to respond to a message and you're driving. So you're not trying to hold the phone and actually type out a message. Just tap the microphone and just say what you want to say and then hit that send button to send it off. Now, you're probably saying, well, what if I want to attach a picture or a video? Well, to the left of our text message box, there is uh, a photo and a camera icon. You'll tap on that, and this will allow you to find any picture that you've already taken, and you can attach that to the message. 
let's attach this picture here. I'm just gonna tap on that one. I can actually attach multiple pictures if I wanted to. And so you'll see they're being added to the message here. And I can hit the send button now and it will send those three pictures. So pretty cool. Now, if we hit the plus all the way to the left, you have a few more options as well. So again, gallery is simply you um, attaching a picture you've already taken. Gallery can, all, uh, can also be you taking a picture right now to attach. So if I tap on this box here, it will actually open up the camera. You actually have to tap on um, the uh, arrows here to open it up. So it'll open the camera let me snap a picture and then attach that picture to the message. Now let's go back to the plus and so we can see some of the other options. You can also attach a GIF, which are those little animated images. So you can come in here and they have all these really fun short clips you can attach. You just simply uh, tap on the search GIF box. You can say happy. Let's see what comes up. Maybe it's a happy birthday. Maybe you just send that, but you'll see a bunch of cool options in here. You'll also see uh, some other keywords you can use. Yes. I love communicating with GIFs, by the way. It's so funny. It just makes a conversation more personable over text. Um, there's also stickers. You have all these great things you can use to attach to a text message to respond to what someone is saying. You have uh, files you can attach, like a document, for example. Like if you have, if you've downloaded a a contract or a document or a, a PDF, you can attach it using this. You can attach your location if you're trying to uh, send someone, "Hey, I'm here. You know, come get me." Tap on location. It will use your location and send that. You can attach a contract, or excuse me, a contact, or you can schedule a message to be sent later. Maybe you're up at 3 a.m. You want to send a message to someone, but hey, they're not going to wake up till 7. I don't want their phone to ring in the middle of the night. Let me schedule this message to go out at 9 p.m. And it will actually delay the message. And to, to finish it, I'm going to tap on that send button, but you'll see scheduled message. So this message still will not go out until the time you scheduled. So... Those are just a few of the things that you can do in regards to sending a text message. Oh, look, someone just sent us a message. And this is what it looks like when a message comes through. Let's hit our back button. And we have a new message. Whenever you have a new message, you'll see a number next to that contact. So Wayne Wonder sent us a message. And there's a one that tells us that we just got one new message. We can tap on that and we can see, hi. Now the app will actually give you some uh, suggested responses. You can respond with hi or how are you? And then it will, it will go ahead and send that as a reply. If not, you're gonna tap in the box, RCS message, and then you'll simply start typing out your reply. I'm good, send. So that's just a brief rundown of how to send a text message and also what it looks like when a message will come into the phone. Next, let's talk about how to control the sound of the phone. I mentioned this earlier, you use the volume buttons to control, is your phone on, um, on is the speaker <clears throat> You'll use this to control, is the phone on sound on, vibrate, or is the sound turned off? Now this happens quick, so I'm, I may have to do this multiple times, but just follow me as I'm gonna speak very quickly here. You can tap on the volume up or volume down to bring up the sound settings, tap on the speaker, and you'll get three options, sound on, sound off, and vibrate. So if I tap this and I tap on this, the phone is now on vibrate. If I tap this, the, the, the phone audio is totally off. 
And if I tap on the speaker, it means that all our volume is up. So that's the first thing you need to know in regards to the sound. Obviously, when you go into a meeting or church or, you know, somewhere where you need to be, your phone should not be making noise, make sure you tap that button and at least put it on vibrate so you'll get, a, your phone will vibrate when a message comes through. And if you just want completely no vibrating, no silence, anything, then you'll switch and go to the slash over the audio button, which means the phone won't, won't, the phone will not make any noise. Now, the next thing you need to know, let's turn our sound back on. This bar is, um, this will help control the volume of the phone. But underneath this bar are three dots. If you tap on the three dots, this takes you to all of the volume meters. Your phone has multiple things that use volume. And so that's why you need to know how to get to this setting because Media volume is one thing, which is, hey, I'm listening to music, I'm listening to a video. So, hey, I want to make that volume 50% or I want that to be louder. But, hey, I want my call. You can say, hey, my call volume is too loud. I want to lower the call volume. OK, well, you can bring that down. Um, there is the ring volume, which is how loud my phone rings when someone calls me. Oh, turn the ringer up. I want to make sure I can hear from any room. And as you move it, it will let you know how it sounds. That's a low ringer, mid, and high. Okay. You have then your notification volume, and this is when you get a new text message. This is the sound it'll make. And you probably don't want to have this on the top volume because it can be really loud. And then you have your alarm volume, which is, hey, I set my alarm to go off at 6 a.m. You know, that's the highest, you know, so you can go through. You'll want to calibrate each volume based on what it will work best for you. You can also change some of those sounds as you scroll down here. There's some different options here as well. So for example, that default notification sound, you can change that to something else. Maybe you're tired of hearing this sound and you want a different sound. You can make it, you know, this is kind of sounds the same, but okay. There you go. That's pipes, shopkeeper, kind of like that one. Tweeter. Just hope. You can pick a different sound here, hit save, and now there will be a different sound when notifications come through. So that's a brief kind of rundown of just how your sound works. And again, we got there by tapping the volume up, tapping the three dots below. And when I basically tried to control one of these different volume meters, it takes you into the full sound and vibration settings so you can see all the different options that are available. All right. Now let's move on to how to make the text size larger. So all of your little, uh, all the words that are underneath your apps or when you get a text message, maybe the words are just too small and you wanna make them bigger. Here's how to do that. You're gonna to go to the settings. Now I have a shortcut here. You should too, but if you don't have this settings, we'll swipe up and swipe until you get to the bottom of the menu here and you just go to settings. And oh, so we need to get out of this page and back to the main screen of the settings. What should we do? We should tap the back button. Okay, that was kind of odd. What the back button should have done was taken us here, but it took us out of the app. No worries, we're here now. So we want to make our text size larger. We need to go to the display function or display uh, page. Display size and text. And here we'll have a few different levers that we can control to make the text larger. So first, we'll start with the font size and you want to hit this plus here. And pay attention because it's going to show you here what it will look like when you increase it. Let's go up again. And notice it's making everything on the screen larger. 
See that? Font size, display. So you can get really big. So obviously, I would I would tell you, keep playing around with this until you find a size that works for you. Um, and you can, again, you know, plus and minus to kind of toggle back and forth to see what size makes sense for you. And then you can also control the display size, which is um, also, you know, so this is just making the text larger, but display size actually makes the icons, makes everything bigger. So notice our icons are getting much larger. Now, if we hit the home button, you'll notice on the home screen now the icons are much bigger. So you'll wanna play around with those two settings to really get it calibrated properly for you. And if we go to the text messages, you'll notice everything is much bigger. If we go to Google Chrome, even the, the text size on the website should be a lot larger now. And your um, Android buttons are larger too. Next, let's get into how to use the camera and where to find the pictures after you've taken them. We're gonna swipe up on the home screen and go to the camera icon. And obviously the first things I wanna point out are your shutter button in the center here. Tapping that is how you take pictures. This button here allows you to switch between the rear camera and the front camera. So switching that, now we're looking out of the front camera. Everything is the same. Now, if you want to switch to taking a video, you have a toggle at the bottom here. So camera and video. And when you switch to video, you'll notice that you don't see a big white circle anymore. You just see a little white dot. And so that's one indicator that you're on the video setting. When you start a video, that button will turn into a little red dot. And you can use this button to pause the video, tap it again to unpause, and then tap here to stop a video. Now, one fun fact, when you're taking a video, if you tap on the shutter right here, you can actually take still pictures while you're recording video. I'm gonna tap here, stop the video. Let's go back to our camera. Now, you also have these two numbers that will show up. You have the 1X and the 1.4. This controls the zoom. This will allow you to zoom in further or zoom out. Now, in, on the front camera, you won't have a lot of zoom, but on the rear camera, there's a lot more options. You have a 0.5, which is kind of hard to see, so let me just pick the camera up here. So this is just the normal lens. If you hit the 0.5, you're switching to the wide angle lens and then go back to one and then the two. So you have a few different options when it comes to the zoom. Okay. Now you have some other camera options here. You have the portrait mode, which is great for taking pictures of, of, of folks. If someone is standing um, right in front of the camera and you do portrait, it'll make the person nice and clear and it will blur out the background. So this is a really fun feature to use. If we swipe over, we have a night sight set setting, which is great for when you're in a low light environment. Um, this will help to capture the most light possible. So that's great. You have your panoramic right here, which allows you to take nice wide shots. Then you have this long exposure setting um, I don't use this one too often, but um, this is also great for uh, taking a picture of moving objects and getting really cool effects. Now, after you take a picture, you'll see a little bubble to the left, and this will allow you to see the very last picture that you took for easy reference. Okay, that was the last picture that we took. Now. Where do I find these pictures on the phone when I just wanna go back and look at them? Let's press the home button here. We're gonna to go to the Google Photos app, which is right here. And this app does uh, quite a few things, but the main thing is it's your photo gallery. And so when you take pictures, they're gonna to save to this app and you can simply swipe through here to see the pictures. Now, um, this app will also back up your photos online. So if you ever lose your phone, you don't have to worry because 
you simply need to go to photos.google.com and there you can sign to your Google account and you can access all the photos that you've taken on your phone. The first time you open this app, you should see a pop-up that's going to ask, do you want to save your photos to Google Drive? Or do you want the app to back up your photos? You want to say yes, and it will begin to back them up to the cloud so you can access them from anywhere uh, using that photos.google.com. These are all the photos that we just took, just the snapshots from the front camera. And down here, you'll actually see some photos that were taken with other phones that are also signed in with that same Gmail. So I use this Gmail on multiple phones. And so the cool thing is I can scroll through here and I can see all the photos that I've taken using this phone and that other phone. So that's one of the benefits of, of using Google Photos and having your photos backed up to the cloud. So you can simply access your photos much easier and you can also see them all in one place. So that's a quick rundown of how to take pictures and also where to find them after you've taken them. Next, let's go into how to lock your phone, how to put a passcode on your phone and also how to set up the fingerprint sensor so you can use that to unlock the phone. So we're gonna go to the settings. We're gonna use our back button to get out of this page and go to the main menu of settings. There we go, we're now on the main screen. You'll notice all the icons are larger because we increased the text in the last section of the video. Now, we're gonna go down to security and privacy. And then you'll see a pop-up here that says set a screen lock. So we're gonna tap on set screen lock. Now you have two different options. Well, you have uh, quite a few options here. Um, the two options I like to use primarily are the pattern or the pin. And when you use the pin, you're setting a four to six digit number that you have to enter to unlock the phone. Um, a lot of other folks will use the pattern, which is another fun option. This, you can program your own pattern and then that's how you unlock the phone, is simply putting in that pattern. So just that easy, we have it set. So if I turn the screen off, turn it back on, and I try to unlock the phone, it says, hey, let's put that pattern in first. And so just that easy, you now have a passcode or a basically a pattern lock on the phone to prevent anyone from just taking your phone and accessing it. Now, once you've done that, you can then set up a fingerprint uh, for an additional security measure. So we'll tap on device unlock, and now we're gonna tap on fingerprint and face unlock. So to set this up, you will need to put in that pattern that we just set up. There we go. Now we can tap fingerprint unlock. You'll simply press more, I agree, start. Now the fingerprint sensor is in the screen. So you'll need to hold the phone. And the important thing when you do this is try to hold the phone in a natural way because you want the phone to learn your finger in the way that you're going to be holding the phone. So right now I'm just, I'm pressing on the reader and then I'm lifting. Every time I put my thumb back on the uh, fingerprint reader, I try to move it slightly because it's trying to learn your fingerprint so that it's easier for you to unlock the phone. As you can see, we're getting close to the end here. Perfect. So we've just programmed a fingerprint on the phone. And one thing I encourage you to do is tap on the add another button here, switch hands, and program one fingerprint from your other hand. This way, if you ever have something on your fingers, maybe a grease or an oil, you have another way to unlock the phone. Just switch hands and use that hand to unlock the phone. Um, you'd, be, you'd be surprised how often folks will use their dominant hand as the, the fingerprint, and then they get something on their hands or their hands are dirty and it doesn't work and they're frustrated. So always program multiple fingerprints. 
You can always go back later and do this as well. I'm just gonna put in one right now for the sake of the video. And we're all set. We officially have a passcode and we have our fingerprint set up so that when the phone is locked, we can simply use our thumbprint to unlock the phone. Pretty cool. All right, let's move on to the next section, which is how to set up your email. And to do this, we'll be going to the Gmail app. Now, you might be saying to yourself, oh, I don't have a Gmail. I have an AOL or I have an SBCglobal.net or a Verizon or an Outlook. Well, here's the cool part. When you go to the Gmail app, let's see, I already have a Gmail on the phone, so I'm gonna go to the upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel, or excuse me, tap on the icon in the right corner, and go to add another account. And you'll see these are all the different email types that you can use within the Gmail app. That's right, Gmail will let you use different email types on the phone. So if you have a Yahoo, you can still sign in. If you have an Outlook or Hotmail, you can still use those as well. You simply select it. You're then gonna put in your email address and your password, and then you'll be able to sign right into your emails. Now I'm gonna give you a walkthrough of how the Gmail app works to check email, but first, I wanna show you a quick workaround if you have an email type that you don't see on the screen. For example, if you have an AOL, here is an easy way to find another app that will work for you to check your AOL emails. Hit the home button. We're gonna to go to the Play Store. Tap on search twice so we can bring up our keyboard. Next, we're gonna tap on the, the button in the up bottom left corner until we get to this set of the keyboard and we're gonna tap on the at symbol I'll tap on the alphabet in the bottom left corner. Now, all you need to do is put in the back half of your email address. For example, if you have a, this is me at AOL.com, just type in at AOL.com. Whatever your at is, that's what you're gonna type in. And when you hit the search, it's going to recommend apps that are compatible with that email type. And the first app that comes up is the actual AOL app. I can simply just download the AOL app and I can use that to sign to my emails and keep track of new emails, send emails, etc. So that's a little trick for you to find a specific app that will work with your email type. Again, you can type in at sbcglobal.net, at verizon.net. Um, it will recommend an app that will work for you and then you can use that to sign to your email. Okay, let's go to the Gmail app, and I wanna give you a walkthrough of just how this app works. So, we are on the inbox of the Gmail app, and here I can see I have quite a few emails, and simply tap on one to read it, and you'll sc scroll through, you can see all the details. Now, you might read this email, and then you're like, cool, I read this, if you want to reply to the email at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a reply button. You simply tap in the box where it says reply. Your keyboard will pop up and you can begin typing a reply. You have a paper clip to the left here. You can use this to attach a photo if you want to attach a specific photo to that email. Let's attach this one. We'll use our back button. So you don't want to tap on the uh, title of the photo, just tap on the icon to the left, and then the upper right corner, tap select, and then that will add that file to the email. It looks like that picture was too big, so we need to find a smaller one. Now, you might tap on reply, and you might decide later, gosh, you know what, I don't wanna to reply to this email. No problem. Hit your back button, press it again, and it will take you out of that reply. You might just say, oh, I read this email and I don't want to respond to it. I just want to delete it. Well, you can tap on the archive button. And the archive button essentially will, it sends it to an archive folder. It doesn't delete the email. It just moves it out of the inbox. Now, uh, I would encourage you don't archive emails. Just like unless you want to be able to find it later, 
That's the only time you want to archive an email. Aside from that, just delete it so you can keep your inbox free. Now, if you want to delete multiple emails, you'll want to tap on the little icon next to the email like this, and you'll see a check and you can begin to check more emails. You might say, oh, these are all spam. I don't need to hear about the new Google Fitbit or the new Pixel, whatever. You can select any and all emails that you just want to delete quickly. And then you can either archive them all at one time or hit the trash can to delete them. Now, if you want to write a new email, there is a compose button right here. Tap on compose. Your keyboard will pop up and you'll first type in who you want to send the email to. I'm going to send mine to wayne at gmail.com. I can then tap in the subject box and I can say hi. And then where it says compose email, I can write my message. Hi there. Okay. You also have that microphone that we talked about in the text messaging section, and you can use that to use the voice to text. It's been a minute. How's your family and your friends? And when you're done, simply tap on that microphone so it will stop listening. So we have our basic message there and I can again attach a photo or file to it here. And then when it's time to send it, I'm going to press this button, same button in the text messaging app, press that button to send off the message. So that's just a very quick rundown. Um, one other thing I want to show you is to the right of each email, there's a star and you can star emails that are important. Maybe you say, oh, um, I'm reading this. This is good. I want to read this later. I'm going to star it. So now that you've started, it, if I tap on the menu button in the upper left corner here, I can go down to starred and just look at my emails that are starred. So it's another really cool trick because obviously as you go through your inboxes, sometimes you read something and you're like, great. Good to know, but I don't need this right now. We'll start so later you can always go back and reference it. Now, last thing I want to show you is when you tap on this hamburger menu here, you have multiple folders. You have primary, which is uh, Gmail is going to try its best to sort through the emails that come through and make sure that emails that are important end up in primary. Now, you have another folder called promotions, and this has to do with emails that are more salesy. So they will move them into a different section automatically to cut down on the clutter in your inbox. You also have a social folder. So things like a YouTube comment or like a Facebook notification, those would all show up in this section. And then you have updates, which Updates is a is a mixed bag of things. So just know that you have these multiple folders and sometimes there is an email that is important that doesn't show up in primary. And these are the other two places or three places to check to um, try to find an important email. If you scroll down further, you'll have some other options here like your your spam, your trash. Um, and a shortcut to your Google Calendar and your contacts. Now, this brings us to the end of our video. I hope you guys did find this helpful. Um, if you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. That will, one, give me feedback that you enjoyed the video. It also helps the video to get pushed out to more people. If you can also leave a comment and let me know what was the most helpful section of the video. Also, if there's anything else that you wanted me to cover that I didn't cover, drop it in the comment section down below. And if we get enough people to comment, I'll create a part two of this video and I'll address your specific questions that were mentioned in the comments. I also have a link here to a playlist with more helpful Pixel 8a videos, and I'll have another helpful video here as well, so definitely check out those. Now, watch this video as many times as you need to feel comfortable with your phone. And last thing, if you go to the description of this video, I have the video broken down into chapters, so you can jump to specific chapters based on the things you feel you need to rewatch to feel more comfortable with them, so check that out too. Thanks again for watching. Take care and as always, have a good one.